Hello everyone! I am back from Iceland and yes, I'm filming inside. The reason why I am doing that is because my luggage did not make it back to Canada with me. So currently all of my tripods are in my checked luggage so I have to prop my camera up on a table and I just can't possibly go and film outside a YouTube video. But that's okay because I want to talk about something that doesn't really have to do with like showing you an image creation. It is actually all about ISO and while I was on tour in Iceland I don't think I talked about ISO as much as I have in my entire life than when I was in Iceland and I realized that a lot of people actually really really struggle with it even though most of us know what it does and like when we can use it. So after we talk about ISO then we will get into all of the life catch up stuff and all of that and I do have some example images to share with you about ISO and what I'm going to explain so you guys understand it a little bit more better. Better? Is that the right way? Is that Does that make sense? Okay. Anyways, let's just get into it. So I trust that most people watching this understand the triangle of how aperture, shutter speed, and ISO all work together. I'm not going to explain which each one of those is. Again, I trust that you guys have some basic knowledge about it. Most people get really, really confused with ISO and when to use it. And you know, it's almost taboo that we would increase our ISO. Like everyone is so afraid to do it because of noise and all of that stuff, which I definitely understand, but it's not as bad as how you might think that it is, especially with uh, cameras like new cameras, their capabilities, and also the noise reduction software that we have. So. I do want to clarify right away that I'm not talking about crazy ISO numbers. I'm like thinking more around highest max, like 6400 ISO. Of course, when you get into like 12,000, 25,000, yeah, there's going to be things that are happening to your images. But again, always recoverable in Photoshop, whatever editing software that you use. All right. So I'll explain what I want to explain first, and then I'm going to show you an example with my self portraits and how I use ISO to my advantage. So here's a really great way to look at that lovely triangle. Aperture. Aperture is more about the desired effect of an image. So if you photograph at things like f8, f11, of course your whole scene is going to be sharp and that's typically what landscape photographers go for because they don't want to have um, parts of a landscape scene that are out of focus. But of course when you get a little bit more creative and you shoot at things like 2.8, yes you can make some beautiful works and have like foregrounds all nice and blurred out. But aperture for me is about the effect. So when I'm shooting portraits, I'm typically shooting at 2.8 or something like that to get that lovely soft buttery background. But when I'm shooting my landscapes, including my self portraits, I am typically photographing them at apertures of f8, f11, f16. All depends on the desired effect that I want in the image. So aperture is about an effect. The shutter speed is what helps you achieve the effect and obviously takes the picture because that is the thing that goes and then the picture is created. And if you shoot with very slow shutter speeds, then you're looking more at long exposure work and everything is slow. It's not really good for handheld, very, very tricky. But usually in the middle of the day, you'll likely always have a fast enough shutter speed to get away with a lower ISO. So where ISO comes in handy is I think of it as assistance if I'm struggling. I am typically photographing on a tripod when I'm out doing my landscapes because I am doing long exposures. However, you can do landscapes without a tripod, easy, handheld, especially when you use ISO to help you assist it. But yeah, that is honestly all that it is, is when you're in a tricky situation and you need some, you need to make sure that something in your image is sharp, which I'll explain in a minute, you can use your ISO to help you achieve that. It is not scary to increase your ISO. If you increase your ISO, then you will never compromise your chosen aperture and then it will help you achieve a faster shutter speed. Honestly, it is so, so simple. So for example, my self portraits are a honestly a great example of where 
or I am having to raise my ISO because I'm typically shooting them at sunrise, sunset in low light situations. So let's look at one of those self portraits and I'll explain further what I mean. Okay, so this image, I recently just photographed it. You actually saw it in the last YouTube video. I'm going to explain how I had to use my ISO, a higher ISO to help me achieve this image. So this one right here, this is the finished file. It's all edited, everything was put together. And when I'm photographing scenes like this and I'm putting myself in the scene, I'm often moving around a lot, like I'm moving like this to move the dress. And when you're photographing at say like F, F, F11, F8 at this time of the day, your shutter speed is likely going to be a little bit slow. So I love that for the, like the scene with it, imagine I wasn't in it, I love that for the scene here because I get this really nice kind of slower shutter speed and it creates this long exposure effect. So that is all fine and dandy. So this scene, again, imagine I wasn't in it. This is like the background of what I was photographing. I did this on a tripod and I was able to have a ISO of 100. Shutter speed again was slow and I was photographing it at F11 because I wanted the entire scene to be sharp. All right, really, really simple. Didn't have to fuss with the ISO in this one. So this here, this is a raw file and this is the portion that I used for myself. And all, most of the time when I'm photographing my self portraits, I'm doing them in two images. One for the landscape scene, long exposure effect without me in it. And then when I get into the scene, I actually have to adjust and change my settings. So it was, again, the light was obviously not in my favor. It was beautiful, but it was giving me these really slow shutter speeds and that just wasn't gonna cut it because I was moving and with a slow shutter speed, you would see that movement. So in this image, it really was just to take the um, part of me and then later I add that into the other scene. But I photographed this one at, I think I, re I ended up having to use my ISO at 1000. With, and that helped me get a fast enough shutter speed without compromising my aperture. And that's exactly what I want. So I use my ISO as assistance to ensure that whatever is moving in the scene is sharp. And for, in my case, it happens to be a person, but it could also be like foliage or the trees. As you can see, the trees in the background, they're very far away. So obviously that didn't really matter. But let's say there was some nice flowers here in the foreground. They're likely going to be moving because there will be a breeze and you need to make sure that those flowers are sharp. So you would raise your ISO to help you get a fast enough shutter speed. And honestly, that is it. Like I don't, I think that's one of the easiest ways to explain it and understand ISO. And I hope that it helps people like not be afraid to use it. If you need to make sure, let's just say flowers or foliage or trees that are really close, like you can see them in the scene, they're not way far in the background. If they're moving and you take an image with ISO 100 at a low light time of the day, those flowers or whatever it is are going to be a little bit blurry in your photo. And I, every time I am working with people, clients on workshops, and they're trying to photograph things like this, they get so frustrated because they don't know how to, you know, make the flowers sharp. So they'll often think, oh, well, I have to stop down to apertures of f 5.6, f 2.8. And then you're just con and then when you get to that point, you're just compromising the effect of the photo. They never really think of their ISO that how it can help them out, or they have been trained by who knows who. And I understand when cameras were really, really old and noise was terrible, that ISO was bad and you never wanted to raise your ISO because it would introduce noise into the image. Wedding photographers are a really great example of people that just do not care about ISO. I remember when I was shooting um, weddings, I was often obviously in manual mode, but I would always use auto ISO because it was way more important to get that moment than it was to fuss about, oh my gosh, maybe there's gonna be noise in this image. And the clients would be very, very angry if I compromised their moments because I was worried about noise. So at some times I was almost shooting at ISO of like 12,000 and yeah, it introduces some grain into the image, but again, it ensures that you get what you are trying to capture. I hope that that, I explained that well properly. I really do. I'm still a little check like you guys. So 
Anyways, it's really good to be back and I missed you guys and next week I'm excited to get outside again. I'm sure I'll have my um, luggage so that I will be able to go out and photograph and do all the filming and all of that stuff. Iceland was honestly a blast. It was really, really busy. We had 40 participants. There would have been no way that I could have filmed anything, but I definitely got to shoot a little bit, made a lot, a lot more friendships, and there's actually people who watch my YouTube channel that were there on the tour, so it was so great to connect with them again and just deepen those friendships. I honestly had a blast. So let's touch base on Ireland, because many of you know I have an Ireland tour next year, which I think it might be close to sold out. I just finished the registration form. I have a couple of things like logistics to just check up on with some like hotels and transportation still before I release it to the public. But I am fairly certain that it is sold out or it is almost sold out. So what I am going to do if there's enough demand for another tour, I'm going to run a second tour right after that. So back to back two tours and Ooh, I'm really looking forward to this one. It feels like it's so far away because it's a year out, but I'm so, so excited to get back there. I hope that you guys are all doing well. And again, I missed you guys. And I think that is it for now. So you'll have to wait another week for the next video. Again, hopefully have my gear and I'll be able to get back out and create and do some more storytelling, which I love so dearly. Please subscribe if you found this helpful, this little tip about ISO. And again, I hope that it helps you guys out. I like to explain things as simply as possible because it helps me understand it better. But the moral of the story here in this video, do not be afraid of your ISO. Anyway, give this video a like. Don't forget to subscribe and I will talk to you guys next week. Bye.